Today, I'm excited to share a brand new project I'm going to be a part of, and I wanna take you on the journey of how I'm going to build this project on top of Linux. What I'm doing is helping create a remotely controlled claw machine that Twitch users can play for a very large YouTube channel. What you're watching right now is a brief preview of some of the development that has been done already in the background. I'll let you guess who the project is for and take you on this journey of the dev process and how I approach things. I'll be letting you know what the channel is that I'm working with at the end of the video, but here's the first couple hints. First off, I already mentioned it's a claw machine that's going to be controlled remotely that people can play. So maybe some of you have seen a YouTuber mentioning a claw machine, but anyways, this channel here has over 15 million plus subscribers. And the second hint is that they do a lot of commentary and critique videos. Now let's get into today's video where we're going to touch on an overview of the project and how I approach large projects like this. This is going to be a general overview and the reason I'm using Linux and calling this a Linux based project is mainly because I'm going to use Linux to not only control hardware but to run my servers, set up comms, and even program on Linux. Some of the reasons I wanted to share this project and this journey is to help people get started on their own development projects. Sometimes it can just be hard to even start. Things like planning, managing and programming can be quite overwhelming, especially if you don't know where to begin. I do want to mention that I'm going to be working with another engineer in order to accomplish this. So management is going to be very important for us. Not only do we got to keep track of time, money and resources, but with a project at this scale, it can be very hard to go back and forth and keep things moving forward. Anyways, I think we're ready for hint number three. I'm going to play a very short clip of this YouTuber's voice. Some of you may be able to guess it. If yeah, because the gamer subs flavors are by far the best best I've had in the space. And that's all you get. And now we're going to begin the overview as I take you through all the project requirements, how I plan on meeting those requirements, and what technologies and or tools I plan on using. This is typically where I start on any project, really with an overview and a plan on how to meet the requirements for almost any project. So again, I'm making this Claw Machine project Linux based. This is because it's free to use, free to install, and I'm most familiar with, especially when it comes to development and programming, setting up servers and whatnot. That's why I chose to go down the Linux route. And let's get into the, some of the fun that's going to be part of this project. So first off, there's going to be a claw machine. At least on one end, we're going to be using something to remotely control this claw machine. That's one of the requirements. Basically, what we want to do is when this YouTuber goes live on Twitch, we want a user to be able to play this claw machine remotely and potentially win something out of the claw machine. So how are we going to accomplish this? Well, the first thing to introduce is a Raspberry Pi. Why a Raspberry Pi? Because it makes it really easy to integrate all the I.O. between the claw machine and the I.O. on the Pi itself. So things like controlling a joystick is much easier with a Pi because we can use digital inputs and outputs to actually control motion. Now the hard part is going to be actually integrating with this machine. We got to break it down and then figure out how we can go up, down, left, right. And we've already done this as we were able to take apart this machine and find that there are a few circuit boards underneath and all that the joystick actually did was go left, right, up and down, which makes things really easy to integrate with a Raspberry Pi and some relays. Fantastic stuff. I'm going to put this over here on the side and the person working with me, I'm going to call them soup for now, was able to break this down fairly easily and, and get us rolling really quick. Shout out to soup. Now that we know how to kind of integrate into the claw machine, we need to set up some of the remote action that's going to happen to control the claw machine and the Raspberry Pi. All right. But there's a few more IO things that we need to cover in order to make this all work properly. Things like game win and claw release have to happen. Again, this is just IO that we're going to use from the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing is in the shoot, if it's triggered, then we need to know that the game has won. So if we move up and down in the shoot, we're going to use some sort of a sensor here in order to detect a game win. That then reports back to the Raspberry Pi, which reports back to the server. Otherwise, we need a claw release function. So we can imagine a little claw getting released down, picking something up or maybe not, coming back up. And then if the claw actually got something, it'd be released down here in the shoot. And we detect the shoot being opened and the Raspberry Pi would receive that information. All right, so much of the hardware in I.O. has been covered at this point. With all that, the plan here is to run Raspbian, which is a Linux-based distribution based off of Debian, specifically made for Raspberry Pis. So that's the first part of our journey, and I think you're ready for the next hint, which is a pretty big one. I said the project would be called Claw Machine, but I'm going to add Moist to the beginning of that. That's all I'm going to say about that one, and then I'm going to move on to the, to the other components. Hopefully this is helping you kind of understand how I approach the project planning process. When it comes to being an engineer, 
who manages quite a few people, it's important to keep lists and plans all in place so you can refer back to them if you get stuck on something. Otherwise, things become overwhelming, especially when you're trying to come up with theory and what you're gonna use. So we have a few more components here. We're gonna just shove this Raspberry Pi here in order to pretty things up. And then we're gonna talk about cameras. So we need a camera also inside Claw Machine because the user has to be able to see what they're playing. So the camera, all it's really doing here is helping the user see what's in the game as they're playing. It. How are they playing it? Through the Raspberry Pi, which is emulating the joystick. So we got to come up with a way to stream this information to the user. Again, we're going to use a Raspberry Pi to do this. So all the IO, including the stream data, is going to go through the Raspberry Pi. That's all great. We've been talking about how to control the claw machine from locally this entire time, but somehow we need to be able to give this control to a user that's far away remotely. What's the plan on accomplishing this? Well, first off, we have to have some sort of a cloud infrastructure or server in order to get this information out to the user. So I imagine purchasing some sort of a cloud infrastructure that's going to communicate back to the user. So I imagine connecting up the Raspberry Pi to the cloud and using this information but again, in the cloud, I plan on using something Linux-based. I'm used to using Ubuntu server, so that's gonna be the plan, at least for the cloud. And inside the cloud, we're gonna to have to have a server. What's the server gonna do? Well, it's gonna run all of our fun stuff, including things like the front end, back end, database, and so on and so forth. Of course, this is multiple servers that are gonna be running, but it's going to be behind the cloud. What cloud provider? I don't necessarily know at this moment. Don't have to necessarily choose, but we just have to understand that there is a server that's going to exist in the cloud and manage our connection between the user. So bringing that up, we're gonna have to come up with a way to actually show this to the client. The client is just the person who's playing, fancy way of saying a person connecting to a server. So we can imagine the client is going to talk to the cloud server and the cloud server is the one talking to the Raspberry Pi. This way we have a middleman that directs all the traffic to proper places, handles everything and reports back to the user. Now, this is just going to be something browser based. That makes it really easy for anyone to connect to our servers directly through the browser. It also makes for easy updating. Imagine if we need to make an update to the GUI for the user or client. Well, very simple. You update the page in the cloud and boom, the browser gets an immediate update as well. All right, with that being said, let's talk a few more things inside the cloud server. Well, we have a backend as well as a database. When it comes to databases, I personally like using MongoDB or database. So that's gonna be my choice for now. And Mongo is a popular open source, NoSQL database management system. And the main reason I'm using it is because I'm familiar. It's extremely flexible. So that helps me as I'm introducing more and more project. And then for the backend, I'm choosing Node.js. Reason being, it's event-driven and non-blocking, which helps with handling many connections simultaneously with high throughput can also help me handle things such as HTTP requests, accessing databases, managing sessions, which is all things that are going to need to be done for this specific game setup. So I've mentioned Linux a few times already. Why Linux? Well, Linux is going to run all of this, aka all my servers. So all of this cloud infrastructure is going to be running on a Linux operating system. And since I've talked about it a few times already, you might be asking yourself why use Linux for this project? Well, again, it's free, easy to set up servers, and again, the most comfortable place for me to do my dev since I'm used to it. I think we have enough now to actually go sort of through the theory of operation here. As I've written it down and gone through this multiple times, the theory here is that we plan on first queuing up users in a database. So again, this MongoDB that we're using, we're supposed to get a webhook that will occur when a user subscribes on Twitch. So that's one portion that we haven't talked about yet. The Twitch API, which is another part of the communication. As we get information, it's going to be processed by the Node app. So we can think of a things like webhook events, when a user subs or the streamer goes live, we need to know those types of events. That way we can process that information and give the proper user a chance to play the game. So we can imagine once we get on air or we go live Twitch, we would wanna put someone in the queue after we see they subscribe. And once we prioritize that user, we're gonna give them a link. How do they get the link? Well, that's still to be established, but maybe we give them a message between our server. Once we get a sub, we send back a message and we say, hey, you're ready with a link. If the user doesn't use the link within a specific amount of time, it will disappear and go on to the next user. Let's say the user actually uses the link. It's gonna represent it with this mail card. Then we give them access to the front end. So that means the user can now use their browser and connect up to our server. Once they've clicked the link, they're ready to play the game. The server will then negotiate between the cloud infrastructure and, and the hardware infrastructure to begin the game. The Raspberry Pi will take a few moments to set things up, such as the stream information all the way to the user. And that's gonna be a persistent connection. That way the user can see what they're controlling. And then of course, 
the other information that comes across is going to be the joystick control. So the user is going to use some sort of front end so they can control this claw machine. If the user actually wins a prize, well, congratulations to this user. They will receive a new page where they can type some information in to actually get a prize. This is an extremely exciting project, at least to me. I hope you've enjoyed the breakdown of the project. Now, this is an overall scope. I'm going to have more updates as I'm progressing through the project with Soup. So if you want to follow the project and get a good understanding from an engineering perspective using Linux on how to approach projects and actually program them. I'm going to be sharing some of the setup process as well as some of the programming that we're doing. I'm super excited about this. Again, this is an awesome project and I almost forgot to share who we're doing this for. That's right. We're working with Penguin Zero, Charlie, or as some of you might know him as Moist Critical. The last hint I gave should have been a pretty big one. But anyways, let's hear a little bit about this claw machine in the background that we plan on letting users play. Hopefully, but right now they did make me a custom gamer subs claw machine that's fully functional so i want to show you that and i also do have a really cool plan for that i got my room looking like a goddamn rave right now about to pop a molly and start shuffling all these lights in here making it look like an arcade from the future like what disney quest was supposed to be and the gamer subs claw machine comes with this beautiful music that makes it feel like you're in a late 90s nightclub code moist up there of course trust me you're gonna want to use code moist at gamersubs.gg all right, now that we get a good look at the claw machine itself, let's hear some of the plans that are gonna be in place to be able to play this claw machine while Charlie is streaming live. I did mention I had big plans for this thing, so let me explain what those are. Have you ever seen those Japanese arcades that allow you to play a claw machine long distance like on your computer? Yeah, we're gonna try and set that up for this bad boy. So during streams when I'm doing like just chatting or going over wacky stories, I can have that claw machine running the entire time and allow some of the viewers to actually play it in real time. I thought this would actually be a really fun thing to do for everyone who's a member, a YouTube member to my streams. Big thanks to everyone who is a member. I thought this would be like a fun perk for it. For those that don't know, I've been streaming on YouTube over the last two weeks and a YouTube member is the same thing as a Twitch sub. So I thought this could be like a fun little mini game that YouTube members can play. So some of this has been updated as time has gone on. As you can tell, he mentioned YouTube. Well, Twitch is actually the environment that we're gonna use, at least for the beginning setup of the game. Also, there will be a camera in order to make things a little easier. At least that's the plan right now, but it's going to be super cool to see the thing running in the background of the streams and probably in some of the YouTube videos. We're super excited. Shout out to Charlie and his team, Matt, Soup, and everyone else involved in the project. I'd love to hear what you think about this video in the comments section below. Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe below because if you've stopped by and you want to follow along with this journey, you'll want to make sure you know when a new video drops. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.